learn how to pull a pony. That's going to be a Tennessee prancing pony. Not going to be it, are you? Alright, start with a hot rod. 2150 degree furnace. Don't be afraid to gather up on the iron just to hair more feeder. Pull out the snout first, pull out the bottom lip. Grab the gears, take the main. Flip it over, grab the leg. Pull the head back up. Flip it over. Give it a kink. Walk and pony. Pull out a hind leg. Pull out another hind leg. Fast enough, Peter, if you pull the third leg, it's a scallion. Not a mare. Gotta be quick. Mares are easy to make. Stallions, tough. Now those ponies are 70 degrees, that pony is 1500. They look the same. You don't want to grab the wrong one on the bench. <laughs> these you can pick up. Yeah, these we made yesterday. So they should walk and they should rear. That's a good sign of a good pony. That's pulling ponies in a nutshell. You can learn to do that. You're going to learn temperature, timing, and sequence of events. So memorize those steps. So as you work through them, there's no reheating because the legs are too fragile. So you have to learn to gather the glass, come out, work it quickly, and make the finished product. No mistakes. Awesome exercise. If you can <laughs> learn to make these awesome, you're good to go. You can make anything. It's silly, but that's where it's at. Uh, this is my gallery space, and I'm David McNaught, and these are some of the uh, glass products we make here at Bear Glass. Uh, a variety of flatware, bell jars, this here would be an old self-portrait. Uh, a lot of times we work gold leaf. Uh, love the uh, addition of decoration and uh, just the versatility of the material. Uh, cobalt blues, uh, really great uh, color to work with, and so these are what we call vitreous enamels, so they're uh, glass paint that's fired on the surface, a small pink duck on the top, nice detail. <laughs> and then uh, over here we make a lot of pumpkins and flowers for giftware. Um, I teach at Cumberland University in uh, Lebanon, Tennessee, where I teach neon sign making. So uh, this is an old light radiator that I made a number of years ago. So we got that out. These larger beakers are from a series I was working on called the Art of Science, where you know take decorative glass and you know make it like a Pyrex beaker. Put a little Mona Lisa on there. Right on. Some fun stuff. I'd like to see that go to the science department. We used to mirrorize glass, and so these were some experiments with, with mirrorizing the glass and uh, you know, kind of a neat process. So we do a lot of things here at the studio and have a good time doing it. And, so, and you, uh, what were the uh, paperweights that you were talking about? Yeah, you want you want to take a look at those? Yeah, clothes? definitely. Let's look at those paperweights. If you get them to say it, yeah. <laughs> I'll be surprised and I'll also obey. What's that? I always talk about she the She was trying to get a twofer. <laughs> no, I, oh. 
So we specialize in these Millefiori paperweights, and so we have a black cat that lives in the studio, so we made a black cat Marini, which is the cane inside, just so the cat can live on, surrounded by uh, six ducks. And so there's a history of picture canes within the uh, decorative designs, and I'm trying to create my own personal narrative, just documenting things that happen here on the farm and, and, uh, and make it more personable. Yeah. So, you know, it's just sort of a, a fun way to keep the work exciting and, and related to what we do here. And you said you were one of six in the world, or? At this point, not a lot of people make the old Millefiori style paperweights, and so uh, there's two of us here in Tennessee. There's a couple of Scotsmen uh, in Scotland who still make it, and then uh, I know there's a man in Colorado. Well, pan, I can't think of any others, you know. We're yeah. still missing somebody, but uh, most folks are either retired or, you know, no longer old factory workers who no longer make this work. So uh, it's sort of a, to me, it feels like a special tradition to be participating within this history yeah. of making. And these paperweights have been made since the 1850s. And so part of what I'm trying to do as a contemporary maker is within the tradition, within that form, how can I give it a contemporary twist, honor it, but advance it at the same time. Yeah. And so, uh, feel fortunate to be able to participate in that. Yeah, awesome. totally. Yeah. Right on, man. Yeah.